welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be filming my What I Read in May video. Um, it is extremely hot today and my hay fever is so bad and I just simply can't stop crying. So apologies for any tears. Maybe I should film like a really dramatic thumbnail like What I Read in May. Like a nice tear rolling down. Anyway, so I read 14 books in May which is quite a lot for me, like I definitely think that's more than I've read in a month for quite a while. Obviously I've been furloughed, blah 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 as I keep saying. Um, so yeah, it was a really good reading month actually. I read a lot of really brilliant books, so I'm excited to talk to you about them now. The first book that I read in May is The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. So I got this um, in March when I was in London, I got it kindly from the publisher um, and I hadn't read it yet and then I saw Simon of Savage Reads uh, do a video about this and said it was like a new favourite book for him so then I had to immediately stop watching the video because I didn't want to hear too much and read the book and then go back and watch the video and I also absolutely love this um so I hadn't read any Evie World before the book is about it's kind of three perspectives of three different women who are all in some way connected to each other and to this bass rock which is a rock off the coast of Scotland um so of the three perspectives you have um, one woman who is in the present day and Viv is her name and she is kind of going back to this house that is in some way linked to her family to sort of sort through it. Um, and then the second perspective is in the 1950s and that's Ruth and she's living in the house that Viv's then connected to. Um, and she lives with her husband and his children and she's sort of settling into this new environment. And then the final perspective is in the 1700s and it follows Sarah who's accused of being a witch. So I definitely think that the Ruth's perspective was the strongest in here. That takes up, I'd say it's split quite evenly between Viv and Ruth and then the parts with the, from the 1700s with the witch kind of things are quite like small, almost like vignettes scattered through, which I think worked really well. So mainly you're going between Viv and Ruth. And I mean, I could have written, I could have read a, an entire book from Ruth's perspective. I definitely thought it was the strongest. It was really gothic and um, had that, all those kind of traditional tropes of moving into this new big house and in you know kind of an isolated place and coming to terms with the locals um, and there's some really like creepy unnerving stuff in here that's really brilliant and there's a lot of stuff about her relationship with her husband Peter uh, and kind of some nefarious things going on there and yeah I thought she was such an interesting character really original and I loved Ruth's perspective. Viv's perspective I kind of liked a bit less but I think the point of this novel and the strength of this novel is the way that the three come together and basically what this book is about it's about male violence and kind of female rage I think and so it's about the way that that male violence is present in all three perspectives in different ways but in a very similar way like it kind of I think is making a comment on how little has changed despite how much has changed. Some people found that a bit heavy-handed like it is quite kind of hitting you over the head with that male violence and I read some reviews of you know people saying it was like a bit too much but I actually found it really really affecting and actually some of the bits in Viv's perspective I found the most affecting because they were these small instances of and Viv you know set in the present day of things that have happened to her or ways that men kind of assert their power and their like dominance in a really it felt relatable and so kind of common that I found that really affecting I think that worked so well in here to kind of make the point of the book there's some kind of there's ideas of you know like sisterhood there's this idea of witches that kind of comes through which I also liked I thought oh is this going to be a bit like cliche but I don't think it was and as much as you know this book as I say the point of it I think is to talk about male violence there's actually some really nuanced beautiful moments as well like moving relationships between characters of of all genders and and actually I thought that was such a it balanced out perfectly I think for me and made it not heavy-handed because what it's talking about is true and important but also it felt like a really good story and you felt for the characters and it wasn't just like a novel to make a point it was also a really good novel so yeah I absolutely loved this Okay, the next book I read was Late in the Day by Tessa Hadley. So I'd never read any Tessa Hadley before, but I'd heard really brilliant things that she was sort of this like underdog, amazing literary writer. So the book is about two couples kind of in their 40s, 50s, um, who have been best friends for years and they're like really close as of four. And right at the start of the book, one of the men, one of the husbands dies and it's kind of about how that affects the group but also it takes you back into how the four of the men and how the couples got together. 
So I did like this book, but I didn't love it. It was probably like a three star for me. I think Tessa Hadley is a really brilliant writer. The, the writing was really rich and kind of very like literary and but very easy to read. I felt like it was really readable and it was really um, a great picture, I think, of realistic relationships. I think my issue, I think this book, one of the themes it really concentrates on is kind of ageing and not that I can't appreciate that because I think I can but it's obviously not something that I maybe related to as much and maybe that's why I didn't connect to it as much the characters are kind of quite unlikable which I don't really mind and I think just because they're so real like it was so realistic and I think that was a good thing about it but also maybe why I didn't love it because I always feel like I want to read about the absolute best of humanity or the worst of humanity and this was just such a nuanced portrait of very realistic people and like how everyone's just sort of can be not a very nice person if I'm making sense I don't know just something with this didn't 100% connect to me but I did really like Tessa Hadley's writing and I would 100% I think I'll read some more of her backlist and kind of give it another go because I wanted to love this but I just sort of didn't so then I read Those People by Louise Candlish so Louise Candlish wrote Our House I think it's called yeah that I feel like I've just seen like everyone in the world read on the train but for some reason I picked up this one I think it was recommended to me by someone and I just kind of was in the mood for a thriller. So the premise of this is that there's this street um, in England where it's kind of like quite a wealthy street and they really pride themselves on being kind of like the best at everything. They have, they're really safe and they're really child friendly. They have all these activities that the kids can participate in. They're really neighbourly. And then there's a house on the street that gets sold to this man and his wife who are just not like that at all. He's quite rude, he's um, kind of maybe a bit more working class. Him and his wife don't really want to get involved in the neighbourhood. They immediately, you know, annoy the other neighbours, yada, yada, yada. So it's just about kind of the way the street reacts to this. And at the start, it's told from like police reports. So you know that like some horrible accident has happened that kind of involves this man um, and you're not sure what. And then you find out about halfway through the book and then there's kind of like a secondary mystery that goes on from that and I think the thing is I think this is a brilliant social satire like a really subtle look at British social class issues and keeping up appearances kind of thing and I think the characters are awful um, and in a really funny way um, but I think it's not a thriller and I think I went in expecting more of a thriller and then was kind of disappointed and I was reading some reviews and I think because it's quite like not low stakes because you know like a couple of people die in this but because it's very much this you know like oh he's parked his car outside my house again and and all of the action spurs from these kind of small things I think I agree that some people could find it a bit insipid and that's why I think it works really well as a social satire and I think she's done a really good job of that but I also get that if you were going in thinking this is going to be like a really twisty exciting thriller like it's it's just not in my opinion the two kind of twists and things that do happen which are a bit more high stakes I kind of guessed as well um so I didn't dislike this and I think I would like to read our house it I read it all in one day it was like a really quick read like really fun holiday -ish vibe but I think I just wanted a bit more for it from it even if it wasn't kind of more in terms of it being really like thrilling and a typical thriller I just found that these characters who were set up on the street who she did sat down really well I would have liked to go a bit deeper into their psyches like a lot of them clearly had kind of like issues and there's a lot of you know drama between them all but I don't really feel like that was explored very much and I think I was kind of expecting to get more into their heads and and why they're so like the way they are so yeah I did find this a bit disappointing okay so then I read Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Every Stowe, and I absolutely love this. This book is so amazing, five stars, like 100%. Talked about this in a different video where I was like, yeah, I just need to read it. I've been really excited to read it for ages. I know it won't disappoint, and it didn't. Um, if you haven't heard about this book, I'm sure you have. It about 12 different characters and just kind of their lives, and most of them are, all of them are women or non-binary people, um, and most of them are black. And British. It's quite difficult to describe because it is these sort of 12 different stories and different perspectives but then they do come together and converge and it didn't ever feel like I was reading like a short story collection it did feel like I was reading a novel just kind of a different kind of novel and I think that's the thing I wouldn't want people to be put off thinking like oh it's gonna be quite abstract and it just doesn't feel like that when you're reading it and also like she doesn't use any full stops which again I know would like really intimidate some people but it, 
but she just uses kind of like line breaks instead so it never again like it's so readable it doesn't feel like there's anything experimental on the level of like the line in the sentence it doesn't feel experimental um but yeah it's just so brilliant because it's just these 12 different stories and you learn about their lives and like I say I think they do converge in a really clever way and I found the ending extremely moving and brilliant and I thought that was so well executed but she's just created 12 really interesting characters that you just want to read about their lives I just from like as soon as I saw this I was just totally hooked um and you know I can't it's almost hard to explain why other than you know it's brilliant writing it's brilliant characterization and it's really just interesting stories about people and yeah it's not kind of their whole life and you get snippets but that kind of gives her the freedom to explore so many different perspectives on things and just so many different people and thoughts and things that can happen and I just loved like every second of this it was just such a joy to read I think even if you're someone who really likes like not necessarily character studies you're more plot based it is it does still feel plotty because you don't spend as much time with this character so then the character's telling you all of the most interesting thing that's happened in their life and like their most interesting and kind of worthy story so all of it is just so fascinating um like I think Bernadine Evaristo is like a complete genius like it's funny it's warm it's moving it makes you think about things and you know there's some very different characters with very different opinions and I don't really feel like she's telling you which one who you should think is right I don't think she kind of has a favorite or is telling you which one you should agree with and which one you shouldn't like um they all felt like completely human really nuanced characters um and yeah I just absolutely love this I really think everyone should read it if you haven't already it was a wonderful so then I had I kind of had a book hanger after <laughs> hangover after girl woman other because it was just so brilliant and I read it really quickly um and I didn't really know what to read next but I was not disappointed when I read Gin Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara. So this book is about, so it's set in India, and it's about a young boy, I think he's nine years old, um, called Jay, who lives in a kind of like slum community with his family. They call it their basti. They live in these kind of houses and they have these shared facilities, but it's not kind of official because the government have kind of threatened that they could like bulldoze it at any minute. Um, so basically one of the other children who lives in this basti with him goes missing um, and Jay kind of watches these tea, like police shows and um, really wants to be a detective so he decides that he and his friends are going to solve the mystery of what happened to the boy and then as he kind of goes on this it's kind of a bit of an adventure um, more children go missing. So I'm a bit hit and miss sometimes about children narrators but actually I thought this was done really well I really liked it. Um, because it's sort of this amateur sleuth vibe but because he's a child he kind of thinks he is and he is discovering stuff that you the reader are discovering with him but he can't quite make sense of it and I think that added a really like, interesting layer to it um the writing's so vivid like she creates this community and, and these kind of parts of India so vividly the writing is just so evocative um really really effective you really feel like you're there the language is the way she uses the language is really interesting as well because she'll just use the Indian words for things um without kind of going out of the way to explain it to you as the reader so you if you don't understand something you'd have to look it up I mean most of it you can just tell from context clues but I like that I think again it built the atmosphere it made you feel like you were there and you weren't it felt a lot more authentic I think because you weren't being like pandered to as a reader um and the mystery part is very compelling I think. One of the things I really liked about it as well was kind of stylistically was that as a few more children go missing throughout you'll get a short chapter from their perspective kind of what happened just before and that really built, <laughs> hit myself in the face, that really built the tension really well and again kind of like fleshed out this world that Jay as a narrator wouldn't have kind of had access to so I thought that was really well done stylistically and it's just a really great book because it is kind of vivid and a bit of an adventure but actually it's about um, the economic and the social situation in India um, as I say that the community is kind of always under threat of just being bulldozed the police aren't helping really find these kids because they're kind of corrupt and they're not these hi-fi families is what they call them these rich families no one really cares Um one of Jay's best friends is a Muslim and he's a Hindu and it kind of covers the the issues between those communities and the way that Muslims are persecuted even within their own community. It also looks at the kind of vulnerability of children and 
and what kind of happens to them and that's kind of how it's resolved. So it's a really powerful book in terms of what it kind of shows you and what it kind of talks about. The way it sort of comments on this situation in you I thought was really powerful and really effective but also it's really moving. It's just a story about a young boy and the way he interacts with his family and um, and the book is very sad towards the end and yeah I just really really enjoyed this um, and would highly recommend it. This is a debut and I'm very much looking forward to reading anything else that Deepa Napara writes because yeah I thought this was brilliant. Cannot stop crying. Okay so the next three books I'm not going to talk about in too much detail because I read them as part of like a reading challenge that I did and um, I'll link the video below where I read based on my personality type. Um, so the first book that I read for that was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is a hugely popular book, I'm sure a lot of you have read it, um, but it's kind of about this community in Ohio called Shaker Heights. It's a very like manufactured, wealthy, nice community. So they have like the best schools and the best facilities, but they also have quite strict rules on what you can do, how you can paint your house, everything has to kind of conform. And it's about a mother and a daughter who move in. The mother's like an artist, she's a bit of a hippie. And then there's another family, the Richardsons, who have four children who are very much like a pillar of the, the Shake Heights community and very by the book. Their mother and Mia kind of clash and the kids sort of get to know each other and their families kind of become interwoven. And at the same time, there's a subplot about a another Shaker Heights kind of American wealthy white family who adopted a Chinese baby who was left outside a fire station and then the mother who'd been suffering from kind of postpartum psychosis wants the baby back and it's about this big court case and how that affects the community um, and yeah I just really really loved this um, I was talking to my friend who's also read it and she said she really isn't a character study reader she much prefers plot whereas I quite love character studies but she said this was great because it did both and I would completely agree and um, I loved my favourite thing about it probably was like the dynamics between these two families, the way they interacted, um, the way she portrayed like ideas of motherhood and belonging through all of these different lenses in all of these different characters and it was really nuanced in the way that intersected I think she did a brilliant job of and I really loved her writing but then also the plot is intriguing, there's a few you know points of intrigue throughout that you really want to know more about and I think it was perfectly paced so yeah I really really enjoyed this. I've since bought Everything I Never Told You which is Celestine's other book that I'm gonna read soon that I'm excited about so yeah really like this. The next one that I read for that video is Sight by Jessie Greengrass so I struggled a bit more with this one as I say there's a much longer review of it in that video but basically this is about a woman who when thinking about whether or not to have a baby sort of reflects on her own childhood her own relationship with her mother and her grandmother and then intersperses that with reflections on important parts in scientific and medical history so going into it i was didn't really know what to expect it's not very long um i thought it would be like very literary but i did sort of struggle with this as i said in my video i think it reads more like a memoir than a novel i'm not sure how autobiographically it is but it's so introspective and not a really huge amount of happens it's all just sort of thinking about decisions and thinking about thinking about decisions and then it's a book about big ideas really because then the things that the protagonist is thinking about and the ideas that Jesse Greengrass kind of puts forward about them are then complemented by these pieces of scientific history and those big ideas and I'll be honest the pieces of the science and the medical stuff really didn't hold my attention. I actually did find the protagonist quite annoying in the kind of stagnant way that it was written, like there was no moving forward and I know that was the point of it but wasn't really my favourite. Um, and yeah, it is a book about big ideas and I liked some of those ideas but I found some of them a bit hard to grapple with. I think you've got to concentrate a lot. Some of them really worked for me, others kind of didn't. Um, but I would say this is so beautifully written, like there's a few passages in here that I've like turned the pages down off because I was so blown away. But yeah, I did struggle with this. I struggled to rate it because it's not by any means a bad book, but I didn't personally enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that was sight. And then finally for that video, I read The Rosie Project by Graham Simonson, which again, like a really famous book, I think was a film out about it. And it's basically about a professor called Don who is kind of potentially on the spectrum the book never really says it either way but he kind of has those sorts of behaviors he's quite eccentric he struggles socially he is very efficient he likes things to be ordered um but he decides he wants to get married so he starts this wife project to meet this perfect woman and you know hilarity ensues it's kind of like a rom-com i found this book so funny like i really really laughed like a lot throughout it and um, i thought it was moving i thought it was 
uplifting and yeah I just really really liked it. I saw some reviews say and I kind of talk about this more in that video um, about it kind of taking the mick out of or laughing at autistic people which I wouldn't agree with obviously I'm not autistic um, but I found that it didn't feel like he was punching down ever um, it was funny but I didn't ever feel like we were laughing at Don and he's never actually said to have autism at all so really I don't think I think the book's more about exploring the eccentricities of human people humanity generally and I think a lot of the time what we're laughing at is society and our expectations that Don doesn't meet rather than laughing at Don for not meeting them if that makes sense but yeah I really enjoyed this just thought it was fun and great okay next up Social Creature by Tara Isabella Burton so I'd never heard of this book before I got it because it was for another kind of reading vlog challenge thing I was doing that didn't end up working out um it came out in 2018 so it was described as a literary thriller which is like one of my favorite genres I absolutely love thrillers and really like kind of literary psychological stuff it's about a woman called Louise who lives in New York and is kind of down on her luck she's struggling she want, she's a struggling writer um, and then she meets Lavinia who's a younger woman who lives in New York who is sort of extremely wealthy extremely glamorous dazzling really like poetic and dramatic and she sweeps Louise up and Louise is drawn into this life that she can only aspire to in that way it was kind of a little bit derivative like that's not a bad thing but it very much felt like I'd read similar things before <laughs> I described it in my review as kind of like a cross between Mr Ripley Gossip Girl and You like by Caroline Kepneys it was had you know I feel like we've all read that stuff before where it's like keeping up appearances um and trying to stay in with this the it crowd or whatever um but that and right from the start you're basically told that Lavinia is gonna die soon um and that's kind of what the book builds to however what I found interesting was that happens about halfway through so I'd kind of been expecting that obviously because I was told but I was kind of expecting how that might happen and how that might wrap up and I was glad that that then wasn't the whole book that came about halfway and I was really interested to see where the book would then go for the second half the only problem was I didn't love where it went I don't want to give any spoilers but it was a kind of trope that I don't really enjoy find quite frustrating to read and again feel like I have read before so I mean it wasn't a bad book by any means I gave it a three um I feel like the characters were a bit um maybe a bit two-dimensional Louise her kind of journey by the end of it I, will, I didn't quite believe and then Lavinia is just that classic character that does kind of annoy me who's just so like dramatic and dazzling and I don't know like unrealistic like the kind of get drunk and get tattoos of poetry on our arm and let's like jump in the water because I don't know I just find that character quite annoying and that's fine because it's you know quite a common character but it never really went anywhere else which I kind of wanted it to but I liked her writing it was it was nice again I read this in a day it was pretty quick to read and I did like it but yeah I just wish it had done a little bit more for me okay so the next couple of books I don't have one because I listened to on audio which was Three Women by Lisa Tadeo so this book came out um, last year I think and or this year and it's a non-fiction book written by a journalist Lisa who has over the course of eight years spent time with three women and kind of learned about their life and one kind of particular aspect of their life and then has written this book which is just their three stories i know some people who say um like they find it harder to rate non-fiction or it's harder for non-fiction to get high ratings for them whereas i would disagree um i find if it's a non-fiction book and i really connect to it then it's just an instant five star to me and this definitely was it felt like fiction like i kept having to remind myself like oh my god this is this is real her writing is stunning the audiobook was brilliant it was narrated by three different women really really well and that these stories so one woman's kind of story is about how she is married and her husband likes her to sleep with other men with him or sleep with other men while he's kind of watching or knows about it one's about a woman who when she was a teenager was in a relationship with her teacher and then there's kind of a court case now that she's older when she's finally told people and then finally a woman who um, kind of becomes a bit obsessed with her high school boyfriend when she's married with kids and kind of starts an affair so they're not like hugely dramatic storylines you know the part about the teacher is probably the most but it's just so brilliant it's I saw it blurbed as like um, in the in cold blood of female sexuality and I just thought that was such a good way to describe it because it's just this 
searing and so raw and real portrayal of just these three women and and their relationship to sex and their relationship to men and the way and society and what's happened to them and yeah the, the fact it was real just made it all the more kind of powerful but Lisa Today's writing is just so absorbing you feel like you're reading fiction and I just think I would highly recommend this to anyone who likes that kind of thing because I just thought it was brilliant like genius really like so much work must have gone into that to spend so much time with these women and really like capture their story they're anonymized um I'm pretty sure but yeah I absolutely loved it and then the other book that I don't have and it's just because my mum's reading it right now is The Dutch House by Anne Patcher which I absolutely loved as well so I've read Commonwealth by Anne Patcher she also wrote Bel Canto which I haven't read and I liked Commonwealth a lot I liked her writing but I wasn't like particularly obsessed with the book I didn't like love the storyline however I loved The Dutch House so it's about this brother and sister and this kind of family who grew up in a house in Pennsylvania their dad's a kind of in property development and he buys this house that was created by these Dutch immigrants that is kind of an architectural masterpiece it's this amazing house that's all kind of glass fronted and really like beautiful and strange and not like other houses um and that's where they grow up and their mother leaves when they're children and they don't really know why or where she's gone and then their dad remarries and the woman moves into the house and then from there it's just about their life what I loved about this was it really it almost felt like a fairy tale retelling like it didn't at all but just that that starting premise of this like ethereal sort of mad almost magical like house that was just so felt so kind of imaginative and and the like trope of you know the mother leaving and then the stepmother and I love that because it felt really, like I say, like a really imaginative way of telling like a very real story. Um, and then from there, I loved the relationship between the brother and sister and it's just sort of about what happens to them in their life and they kind of return, keep returning to this Dutch house to look at it and to kind of talk about their childhood throughout their life. My investment in those two characters and their relationship is really what kind of pushed me through the rest of the book. It's not you just basically find out about their lives and you get some back story and some history about their family but yeah really I just loved their relationship and I thought Anne Patrick wrote it so brilliantly it was extremely moving um I loved the recurring image of the house and kind of what it stood for and about kind of memory and their history and the way that the siblings very differently deal with that throughout their lives but yeah I would really recommend it and um, I thought it was extremely moving an extremely well done portrait of a family um, and I just loved that that kind of spark of something that the setting of the Dutch house gave and of that kind of vibe that it was giving me I just thought it was really different and really absorbing to read so yeah that was that one after that I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens which again I absolutely loved this is another five star book for me so again I've seen so many people reading this book it's so hugely popular but if you didn't know it's about this girl in North Carolina who they call her the marsh girl because she and her family lived in kind of like a hut in the marshes on the kind of outskirts of this town in North Carolina and then when she's extremely young one by one her family kind of leave her until she's left by herself and she has to learn how to live on the land kind of evade social services and yeah grow up completely almost completely isolated and um getting to grips with the landscape and kind of using that to survive and the secondary plot which kind of you start with is that about 20 years later from when you meet her as a six-year-old someone a man from the town has died and the police think that it was murder um and so you kind of flip between her story and then this story until it kind of catches up with itself and basically she's gonna be accused of the murder so there's like a court case plot that you get to at the end so I like that I, lo I like love a murder mystery and I think that was done really well um, the ending definitely took me by surprise but that part of it is I think secondary and I think the true strength of this novel is just how beautifully it's written and how well done a character just spending a lot of time by themselves is done like I think that's a difficult thing to write and yet I couldn't put this down I enjoyed 
so much just reading about her in nature, fending for herself, exploring her landscape. At some point she does sort of make a friend, someone from the town, and I thought all of that stuff in their relationship was done beautifully, kind of exploring the ideas of what it is like to have been so isolated and to have been kind of abandoned and neglected by society and then to meet someone and to try and try and connect with them. Um, I loved the character of Kaya, the Marsh girl. I thought, yeah, you just care about her so much. I loved the setting. I really, I think I've said before, love stuff set in like Southern America and the kind of really hot, marshy, swampy um, feeling I think was done really well. It really suited this and it, it felt like um, believable, like very realistic, but it's such a different story and it felt like such a big story which I really like sometimes it's just nice to read something that feels like a big saga and like a big story and I really felt like that about this um it had almost a sort of like folklore element to it or like not I don't know how to put it but because she's just fending for herself and surviving by herself in a way that feels so separate from you know normal life I just loved reading about it it was really absorbing and really different and dramatic yeah I'm just reading vivid and original definitely a rare achievement yeah I just found it brilliant um the one thing I didn't love about it is like it does that thing which books do where right at the end they sort of the last few pages will cover like 50 years and I really don't like that but I get why that kind of had to be done for here. I guess it is really effective that you, you see Kai's whole life really in this book. I would highly recommend it. The Leaning Tower of Books there. Okay, so penultimately I read Eileen by Tessa Moschweg. So I've read My Year of Rest and Relaxation, really liked it, really wanted to read Death in Her Hands, then they pushed it, and then I was like, let's go back and read Eileen. This came out in 2016. It was shortlisted for The Man Booker. This is definitely a character study more than anything else. It's about a young woman called Eileen who it's narrated by like a much older Eileen and although she kind of implies things about her life and sort of references the life she'll go on to live and all of these things that's happened to her, the book is just a week when she was 24 and what happened to her in this week. So at the time of the book Eileen lives with her dad who's an alcoholic, her mother's dead um, and she has like a horrible relationship with her dad, she works in a boys prison um, and she doesn't particularly have a nice time at work um, and she is a very odd character it was so brilliant to read because because it's so dark and it's so kind of odd and different but also kind of blackly funny so she's not a nice person um and you really get all of her worst thoughts she's extremely unhappy with herself she's extremely unhappy and uninspired by everyone else it's described as a psychological thriller it does kind of build up to a lot of action in the last kind of 50 pages of the book um, which I liked and I thought was well done and interesting but really like to get the most out of this book it's you wouldn't be going into it because of like the thrillerness of it it does build tension really well and kind of forebode things really well throughout the book but that last bit of action wasn't really my favourite thing about it it was just how original the novel felt how sharp the writing was in creating this kind of awful character central point of plot I guess is that this woman arrives at work who Eileen kind of becomes obsessed with so she lives extremely isolated life she only really speaks to her dad and herself and she hates her dad and they have a horrible abusive relationship and then this woman starts at work and Eileen is kind of enchanted by the idea that this is her escape from her life and that what this woman can offer her and it goes on from there that's when it kind of gets into a thriller but it's really um as I say kind of like blackly funny if you don't have a strong stomach for like dark twisted things or like really visceral accounts of abuse but also just kind of bodily functions I would steer clear from this book um Eileen is kind of a repulsive grotesque character and doesn't shy away from talking about really quite disgusting things um but I really like Otessa Moshweg's writing I think she creates from what I've read in Western Relaxation as well creates really like original characters are really interesting to read and who aren't likeable at all um but are such good character studies of just getting into the mind of someone who feels so different and so outside your own experience i think that's really like entertaining to read um 
and it also allows her to you know make kind of comment on things and it is witty and it is funny on the back it says a seductive novel which i would definitely agree with it just kind of just draw you into eileen's world and all this dark stuff that's happening and it's yeah i just really really enjoyed it um i'm not sure it'd be for everyone but i really like it okay so finally um if you watched my call your bookshelves tag video one of the things was what is a book that you bought with no intention to ever read and i was like well i don't i don't think i've ever done that like i always at least have an intention to read it so then i looked at my shelves and i was like well are there any books now that i don't want to read and it reminded me of this this is framed by ronnie o'sullivan ronnie o'sullivan is an extremely famous extremely talented snooker player who then took to writing crime fiction so i lost a bet at uni that i had to read this it didn't and then my mates posted it to me with the instructions read framed sign send it teammate i've had this for three years and i hadn't read it and i'm constantly pestered by them to read it i love ronnie o'sullivan don't get me wrong like i think he's a brilliant snooker player i think he's hilarious if you haven't seen the video of him playing snooker with a vr headset on where he goes to lean on the table and just face plants would highly recommend however i would say maybe should have stuck to snooker and not writing i have some thoughts it's just it's not not my favorite um there's quite a few mistakes in it I hate to say the plot is quite it's, i'll tell you what it's about although i'm sure no one wants to read this it's about a young guy who runs a snooker club because it's got to have like a snooker theme obviously um and then his brother is accused of murder but frankie our main character thinks he's been framed get it um and yeah it's just full of like quite there's a lot of sexism there's a lot of prostitutes there's a lot of kind of uh, frankie like being a big man and sleeping with loads of women um a lot of like gangster stuff that just doesn't really interest me and some quite questionable turn of phrase such as um he likes to use the word crapola he also talks about the character getting dressed up and like you know wants to look his best so he puts on his dice cufflinks which i thought was an interesting fashion choice yeah so there's just this wasn't my favorite i don't think i'll be reading the sequel double kiss i beg my friend who sent me this not to send me that one as well but yeah it was um an entertaining way to spend an afternoon in the sun i give it two stars ending on a bit of a bum note there um but yeah they were all the books that i read in may i had a really good reading month um i'd love to know if you've read any of these books and i'm excited to get started on my feel good -a -thon books um which i'm going to be reading in the first two weeks of june um i'll link my tbr for that down below and yeah thanks very much for watching bye